Hi, this is Mako for Simply Rise Magazine. I'm here at the Women's Holiday Tea, and this event is brought to you by the Brotherhood and Sister Soul Organization. I gotta be honest with you, I'm looking forward to spending the afternoon with all these wonderful ladies, and so stay tuned to Simply Rise Magazine to find out what this event brings, plus more. I'm standing here with Susan Wilcox. Susan, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Excellent. So could you tell us what your involvement is with the organization? Well, I've been involved since the very beginning. I started out as the first chair of the board of directors, moved on to become one of the co-executive directors, brought in Sister Soul. Um, originally, it was just the Brotherhood. And since then, I've held different positions, and right now I'm consulting with the organization. But it started out as a rites of passage program, doing single-sex programming for young men and young women, you know, eventually when we brought young women in. And the idea was to take young people through a four- to six-year process of having them define for themselves what it means to be a man or a woman, a brother, a sister, and a leader. And so that's really the foundation of our work. Really, you know, sort of understanding that young people know what's right, but not always having the will to, to do it. So having them connect with other young people who are also coming from a very positive place. It's a very noble idea and a fantastic execution. It's a great event here today. So did you organize this event? The event was actually organized by my sister, Gwen Wilcox, who is now a board member of the organization, loves tea, loves hanging out with women, and thought this would be a great way to really celebrate the organization. So while it's a woman-centered event, it's for the Brotherhood Sister Soul. Um, most of our work is done in a co-educational way, um, but this event is just a way to really you know, bring together women who care about um, helping young people and also who love to drink tea. That's fantastic. I love tea. I'm looking forward to having some tea later. So where do you see the organization in 10, 15, 20 years? I mean, I think in many ways what we do now is what we want to do moving forward. We provide really intimate connections to young people. We're not an organization that in 20 years we're going to be working with 5,000 kids because we want to know all the young people and we want them to know us as well. And so ideally we'll be in a larger space because we're in a small brownstone in Harlem now. We bought land next to it and we really want to develop that. So hopefully we'll be in a, a lovely space now that's an environmentally green building and really um, be sustained in a way that we don't have to, um, you know, worry about sort of the day-to-day -day of making an organization happen, but really caring about the long-term development of young people. What are we raising funds for today? Well, we're really raising funds for all of the programs. So we do the Rites of Passage program. We take kids overseas to Africa and Latin America every summer. Our kids um, are youth organizers in the community. We have a garden that they're a part of. And so the, this funding will really support that kind of work. Oftentimes when we get money from foundations, it's allotted for very specific things. Uh, the way that we can um, you know, really utilize community as a way to support our work is through events such as this, where the money can go to however um, is best. If you make a contribution now, you'll be supporting all of the work that we do. Uh, the organization is taking children to Africa this year. Yes. What part of Africa are you going to? Well, actually, we're going to Latin America. Last year, we were in Ghana, and this coming summer, we're going to Brazil. So they started working on the trip in January, really studying the, the country, the history, the politics. And then they spend a month overseas, traveling around the country, meeting with um, NGO and government officials, doing ethnographic research, um, doing a lot of peer-to-peer -peer teaching, and really coming back, as you can imagine, Imagine um, really energized, um, enlightened, and inspired. Well, I'm from Zimbabwe, so January's coming up, so I'm putting in my bid now for the kids to go to Zimbabwe this year. Oh, it would be great to go to Zimbabwe. I've been there as well, yeah. and I have, and it's a, it's a beautiful place, and so now we have a family there. You do. <laughs> Anytime, you're more than welcome to come. I have to ask, what was your first car that you ever owned, drove, or ever had? It was a Toyota Corolla. It was a bit of a hoopty, but it did what it needed to do. You still have it? I don't. Now I have a hoopty Volvo, which is a 2001. Oh. 2001 is not hoopty. It gets you around, right? It does. It does. Thank you so much, Susan. Looking forward to the event. Great. Have a good time. Thanks for coming out. Thank you.